All right, it is Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, and this is for International Foods. And we are focusing on more European countries, especially Eastern European countries, this last unit. So today we are going to make a Swedish Kladkaka cake. Silly name, delicious cake, right? It's ooey gooey, kind of like a brownie texture to it, um, and easy to make. So if you can make brownies from scratch, you can easily do this instead to have something different. So we're gonna start off with a nice large mixing bowl and a whisk and some sugar, right? So this is definitely, you know, not a low sugar recipe. Um, it is going to use one and a third cups of sugar. So make sure you do both well. One full cup and a third of a cup. So one slash three, right? So we're gonna do our one cup of sugar, make sure it's nice and level. And then we're gonna do a third cup of sugar. All right, so one and a third cups on the sugar. And then to this, we're gonna add two large eggs. All right, we're gonna crack them in a separate little bowl here just to make sure that they look good, right? So on a flat surface. So we're going to cream together the sugar and the eggs first to start off our cake. There we go. Looks good. All right. So if you don't have a whisk, you could use a spoon for this. Uh, whisk just makes it a little bit quicker. All right. and we're looking to blend these two together really well. So it's well combined and get a little bit lighter color on the egg egg right so we're looking to get a nice pale shade of yellow so whenever you're mixing something right for baking always remember to scrape the side of that bowl and the bottom so you don't end up with little bits of dry ingredients in the bottom of your mixing bowl right you can see that it's getting lighter in color that's what we want right well blended you can do this whole recipe by hand you don't need a machine for Right. So then to this, we're going to add in a half a cup of all purpose flour. So this cake recipe only gets a little small amount of flour. A lot of cakes get a lot of flour. This is just a little bit. So only a half a cup. All right. So we're going to scoop this in and level it off. Right. Because so we don't want it compacted. It's a very light cup of flour. Right. So half a cup. Scrape it nice and level. I'm going to add that straight into our mixing bowl, right, with our eggs and our sugar. Now, for other dry ingredients, this is also going to get a quarter cup of cocoa, right? So I've just got a little bit of Hershey's unsweetened cocoa here that we're going to use. So you want something that is considered a baking cocoa, right, not something you'd make hot chocolate with. And for this one here, you can just scoop and then I have another knife that I'm going to just scrape that nice and level so I get a quarter cup, so it's one slash four, right? Get that all in there. We don't want to leave any cocoa behind. We're also going to add in just a little pinch of salt. So just put your fingertips, just give it a nice little pinch. You don't need a lot. I'm going to get this blended some. So go slow when you're stirring, when you add in those dry ingredients, right? So they don't get everywhere. Start getting this combined. Now we're gonna add even more liquid to this, but in the form of butter, right? So we're gonna need a half a cup of butter melted. So I've got it sitting on the back stove here, keeping warm. All right, so we've got our melted butter. So half a cup is one whole stick, okay? So you can melt this on top of your warm oven while you get other things ready, or you can put it in the microwave, just do it a few seconds at a time. So start blending this in, All right? So a whole stick of butter. So this is not low cal, low sugar, for sure. Right, this is a very rich treat. All right, you wanna get that we're starting to mix that in. 
Now we also want to add in some vanilla. All right, so we're going to use some vanilla extract. Put that right here. And we're going to do a full tablespoon. So a lot of vanilla. Get a really nice flavor. So one tablespoon of vanilla. Now at this point, you want to make sure that everything gets blended really well. It'll be a nice thick batter, right? It's going to look kind of like a brownie, kind of like cake batter. Right. Smells good. Cocoa, vanilla, butter sugar right really simple like i said very little flour um it's not quite a flourless chocolate cake because it's got a little flour but very small amount so now for the pan you want somewhere around an eight inch size cake pan right and i'm just using one of these disposable foil ones you could use a regular metal one or a glass one that's fine but what we need to do is we need to grease this beforehand right so normally for the cake you would grease and flour your cake pan we're gonna grease and cocoa powder it instead, right? Because since this is a chocolate cake, I don't wanna put flour in here, because when I take the cake out, little bits of flour will get stuck and left behind and leave like white streaks, and we don't want that. So I've got a little bit of butter here. This is left over from other recipes and things, right? Just a little bit of butter. I let it sit out for a while to soften up. You can just do this with your hands, right? We're gonna come in and grease the bottom and up the sides okay so we want to make sure that our cake doesn't stick now you could use one of those pan sprays to do this um i find you get a better coating with some nice thick butter though all right so don't forget to go up the sides of your pan he like said normally with a cake you would do the flour but you don't want that to show after because this cake is not going to frosting or anything like that. A blank spot there. So you just want to give it a quick glance over. All right? Make sure you've got everything fairly well covered. This cake won't rise very much, so I don't worry too much about the very top edge. But now we're going to add in some cocoa powder. So about a tablespoon's worth of cocoa right into your cake pan. Okay? Keep the container close by to put the excess back in. And what you want to do at this point is just start to shake it around. Right? Then on its side, get those side edges also. And that's why I usually have the container here. So I can do that over the container. So I'm not making a mess everywhere. A little bit more in there. A little bit of a bare spot. All right? So then you have your pan ready to go, right? Like I said, if you were to use some flour with that, it's okay. But you already have the cocoa powder anyways, so you might as well make it so that it looks nice when it comes out, right? Now, as I've just been doing that, you're already going to see that this batter starts to get really thick, okay? So we're going to switch over to a spatula. So it's going to tap out all this excess. Right, and that quad coffee cake, it's really rich and gooey, right? That's what we want, something that's yummy. So rubber spatula, you're going to see how thick this batter is. If it's loaded with butter and sugar, you know it's going to be good. Okay, so scrape it all out. Now, you want to take your spatula, the back side of the spatula, and spread this around. It might look like it's trying to pull away from that corner. That's because you have that cocoa powder there. That's okay. Just spread it out so that it's somewhat level. Now, this is going to go right into the oven, and I've got the oven already preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, right. Nice and thick. Okay, so we're going to take and put that in there. And this is nice to do it in these disposable pans like this, because then that way if you give the cake away, you don't have to worry about getting your pan back, right? So this is, like I said, it's going to go oven 350 degrees. I'm going to look at 
my time here. So 20 minutes exactly, right? Now, when you've, if you've ever made homemade brownies or cakes or things like that, like a cake you can put a toothpick in, you can kind of tell if the batter comes out clean. It will not be the same with this cake, right? The Clark Packet cake is very thick and like think of a real soft, gooey brownie. So even if you tested it that way, it's not going to come out clean. So 20 minutes, what you're looking for is it's going to form a crust on top, right? And I have one here, you know, right? Super quick cake, look at that, right? There's our pocket cake. So you can see it's got a nice little hard crust on top. So what I did is I took and I baked this in the same exact pan, same foil pan, 20 minutes, put it to the side, let it sit in the pan for a good 10 minutes or so to cool, right? Then you can take, loosen it up with a little butter knife around the edges to make sure that it's not sticking or anything, and you could flip it out onto a cooling rack. Or you can just eat it straight out of that little foil pan. It doesn't have to come out, but I want you to be able to see the whole thing, right? So once your cake is baked, I'm gonna show you a nice little fancy way to serve it, right? So like I said, it's gonna get a little bit of a crust. So you'll hear a little bit of a crunch there. So I'm using a serrated knife to cut the cake with. Sorry, my plate's just a little bit wobbly. A little dessert plate here. Should be able to see. Look at that ooey gooeyness. Look at that. Okay. So it will stay a nice gooey texture on the inside. So like I said, it's kind of a brownie, kind of like one of those lava cakes. Really good. But that's what scares people is they think that it's not done and put it back in the oven. It is perfectly fine like this, right? It is nice, it's ooey gooey, that's what you want, okay? Now to finish this off, we're gonna add a little bit of a garnish to it, right? So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do a little fancy strawberry. Now, with the whole strawberry, these have been washed and dried. You want to leave the green top on, right, to hold this together. But similar to slicing an onion up before you cut it and dice it, I'm going to take and make some cuts down through the strawberry. But I don't want to go all the way through the top here. So I'm going to come in on the side. Like I said, make sure I'm leaving it attached at the top. You could do the same thing with whole strawberries or a strawberry cut in half, either way, right? So once you have it so that it's sliced open like a fan, right, with your hand, push on it. So push it to one side, right? There you go, right? There's your little strawberry fan. Put this on top here. I'm gonna add a little whipped cream. each side and then you can finish it off even with just a little bit of powdered sugar so I've got a little sifter here and you could just do powdered sugar over the whole cake right and leave the cake whole that's fine right? just a little fun and there you go right super simple I said ooey gooey yummy what's not to love right chocolate you know you got Nice, intense chocolate flavor just from that cocoa powder, butter, sugar, eggs, vanilla, a little pinch of salt, a little, little bit of flour, and that's it. Okay. That is your Swedish Kladkaka cake. Hopefully, you guys try that at home instead of brownies, right? Um, just as easy to do, and it's quick. 20 minutes in the oven. actually takes less time than making brownies. So, there you go. Some love from Sweden.